Hello guys, uh, welcome again, and this is Hybrid Financial Consultants, and today we are just going to proceed uh, with our standard A16 property plant and equipment. Now, actually, uh, in the previous two parts, uh, we took a look at introduction, scope, uh, definitions, recognition, as well as initial measurement. But actually, when, when it comes to initial measurement, actually, there are a lot of ways that we can use, because we said that initially, PPE is recognized at cost. This one, we recognize it at cost, and uh, we took a look at an example, at an example, but also you can recognize it at a deemed cost, which is usually the fair value. And wh wh when does this usually happen? You know, this can happen, let's say, in case of uh, you have an asset, you really actually didn't pay for an asset, let's say you, you, you made an exchange, exchange of assets, at which point you usually consider fair value if possible. And now let's check at that. We did this part here of initial measurement and uh, all right, stop with this subsequent expenditure. Let's go here to exchange of assets. What happens when we make an exchange of assets? You acquire an asset by exchange. Let's say you give out a machine and then you are given uh, another asset. How do you record that in the books? Because we'll be having at the first, for the first time, how would you recognize it? Here, here we go. I 16 specify that exchange of items of PPE, regardless of whether the assets are similar, are measured at fair value. So when we exchange actually the assets, you have to use fair value unless it is impossible. Except when it is impossible. But otherwise, you have to use fair value. That's why you say, unless. First, the exchange transaction lacks commercial substance. This is number one. Actually, we'll see by me lacking commercial substance what it, what it means. Oh, the fair value of neither assets exchange can be measured reliably. I think this point number two is very, very obvious. We say that we measure an asset uh, using fair value, but we cannot obtain the fair value. There's no reliable measurement of fair value. So it's pretty obvious that even if there is a commercial substance, you, you won't be able to use fair value because you won't have such values. And so I'll say, if the acquired item is not measured at fair value, its cost is measured at the carrying amount of the asset given up. Don't worry about this. I'll put actually uh, the ways on how to use the, these fair values. We just see down here. Let's just quote the meaning of commercial substance. What do we mean by commercial substance? Lack of commercial substance means that, let me tell you one thing. Just presume that uh, you're exchanging two cars. Maybe you have uh, a Ford, a Toyota Ford, one Toyota Ford and the other Toyota Ford, exact with exact everything, no difference at all. That that is to make it easier. Lack of commercial substance means no implications on future cash flows. We just go and take a look at the impact on future cash flows and how do you know that uh, th there will be an impact on future cash flows? We check at these markets here. We consider risk. Then we consider timing, but also you consider amount, or you could just say capacity. If there is a difference in either of the, in at least either of the three, then we say that there is a commercial substance. You know, let me tell you one thing, it's just very, very, I think just very clear. We are just speaking on the implications on cash flows. And now, if you're speaking of implications on cash flows, uh, let me just give you a brief description. I hope that uh, you have a, a bit of an idea about time value of money. You know, when speaking of cash flows, how do you obtain uh, the present value of cash flows? It's even in case of investment appraisal, we usually take cash flows, let's say if it's cash flow one, and then we'll discount it by one year. We we'll discount it by one year. And then you go cash flow two, you discount it by one year, by, by two years. Then cash flow three by three years, cash flow four by four years. You know, by discounting, that means you have cash flow in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year. So by same timing, we mean that actually uh, the time that an asset has in, in the remaining life. So if there is a difference in timing, that means there will be difference in cash flows because there will be less number of cash flows in the years. But also, we speak of the amount. By the amount, we speak of the truly value of these cash flows. What do these cash flows entail? And by saying these cash flows entail, they will be reflected in the they could be reflected in the value of the asset. 
also we are speaking on the risk by speaking on the risk you know these values here these cash flows are usually discounted to present values that discount factor incorporates risk actually it will be a risk discounted factor that's why we speak of the risk so speaking of those three matters we actually speak of the value what you could actually recoup from that asset by continuing using it so that's what uh, we're just speaking about so i think uh you got me on how we speak of uh the commercial substance that's what we speak of commercial substance so when you exchange the assets you just need uh to use the following procedures so as to value them just like this so check down here here this is the order of preference so when exchanging the assets, let's say you have asset A and you, 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 you take asset B and give out asset A, this is what we will be doing. First of all, you will measure the asset at the fair value of the asset given. So if you have your asset and you're giving it to another person, you will have to exchange it. You will have to value that new asset by the fair value of that asset you are giving up. But, you know, it can happen that this value is not available. What if the fair value of the asset you are giving up is not available? Then you will have no way, and those same so you have to use the fair value of the asset acquired. So use the fair value of the asset acquired. In case no fair values are available, then you will have to use the, the carrying amount of the asset given up. So this is what I was speaking about. And actually, this is what about this carrying amount of the asset given up is sort of specified over here. So let me give you an example. And so that I will, we just take a look, we just take a, a, a better look of what I'm just trying to speak of. Let's consider these two things. Let's just go to an example. Let me give you a, a very, very good example. Let's say you are ABC Limited. ABC Limited, and you have an asset. ABC Limited has asset A. And this asset A of ABC Limited has a carrying amount Let's presume that this asset has a carrying amount of this figure. The carrying amount is 30 million, let's say. But also let's presume that this asset has a fair value. The fair value of this asset that you're about to give up is let's say uh, 40 million, right? And then we proceed. Let's say to uh, you have asset B. Asset B, you, you need to acquire. This asset B is an asset to be acquired. So you say to be acquired, just like this. So you need to acquire asset B from someone else. This asset A actually, actually is what is owned. And that is what we expect to be given up. To be given up. To be given up. You have this asset, you expect to give it up. Also, you have asset B, you expect to acquire it. Let's say asset B also has a carrying amount of say uh, 5 million. By the same principle, let's presume that this asset B has a fair value of how much? Let's say asset B has a fair value of 30 million, or let's say of 35 million, just like this. So you are told that you are about to give out asset A and receive asset B. How would you recognize that asset B in the books? So, as I told you, what we have to do, first of all, uh, you know, we do recognize asset A and you recognize asset B. So you have to recognize asset A. So asset A in the books is carried at 30 million. So I'll, first of all, I'll have to, to recognize this 30 million. They're recognizing 30 million because an asset has a debit nature, I'll have to credit asset A carrying amount and credit in the box by what amount? Asset A was carried at 30 million. So I credit by 30 million, just like this. And then we, we will have to recognize asset B because they're just going to recognize asset B. Now this is pretty much obvious, asset B. But what I really want here is to know the value at which to recognize asset B. At what value are we going to recognize asset B? We said that first of all, you take a look at fair value of asset given up. Since we're giving up asset A, you just take a look. Asset A has a fair value of 40 million. So if it has a fair value of 40 million, that means I'll have to recognize asset B at the same value, which is 40 million. I mean, 40 million. And that will be all. 
before you have to take a loan. You know, you have to complete the double entries. Debit side at 40 million, while credit side at 10 million, 30 million. So I have to balance it by putting the gain here. Gain, gain on Fiverr exchange. What gain will I have now? I'll have a gain of 10 million. Where will this, where will this gain go? This gain will actually be recognized directly to the statement of profit or loss. So it will go to the statement of profit or loss. I hope everything is fine here. I hope you got me. So this is how we will go about the exchange of assets. Now, let's presume the second scenario. Let's presume the second scenario here. Let's say that it, it, it happened that you didn't have the fair value of the asset given up. Suppose we say no fair value of asset A to the asset given up. In case no fair value of asset A, we, I would have to use the fair value of the asset acquired, which is 35 million. So in that case, we say fair value of asset B, which is the asset, asset to be acquired, just like this. So my double entries. What would have happened to my double entries here? As usual, I would have to first to be recognized asset A. So I would recognize asset A at its current amount, which is uh, 30 million, just like normal, 30 million. And then I would have to recognize asset B. So I will write here debit, then asset B. What value now at the fair value of asset acquired, which would be 35 million. So here I will use 35 million and then I'll have to balance my books, just balance my double entries. Credit side as a, de as a deficit of actually a dream of 5 million. And so I'll put 5 million here and this gain will be taken to the statement of profit or loss, just like this. And then I will place here 5 million, just like this. So that's how we do. Now let's take a look at the, far, at the last uh, possibility. Let's presume that at the last possibility, you are told that there is no fair value. Fair value of neither assets cannot be obtained. If fair value of neither assets cannot be obtained, what would we have done here? What would we have done if no fair value of either assets? If no fair value of either assets, which is the third scenario, third scenario, this is what would have happened. I would have to use, let's say, no fair value, no fair value at all, no fair value of any asset. In this case, actually, I would have uh, to recognize the asset, the fair value, at the carrying amount of the asset given up. So actually, there will be nothing more, nothing much to do here because I will have to, to recognize asset A, carrying amount, recognize it in the books, if it had a value of 30 million. And then I would have to recognize asset B by debiting it. So debit here, asset B, at the same value, which is 30 million, because it's the value of asset given up. So there will be no gain or loss on the fair value, on the exchange of assets. So this is what would have happened. We'll just change the values, remove, we just change the assets, change asset A to asset B, and all would have been done. But also, uh, as I said, for scenario one and scenario two, we use the fair value only when it can be obtained, but also there is a commercial substance. In case the transaction lacks commercial substance, in case you're exchanging two cars of actually the same value, the same amount, the same capacity, actually you will have to do nothing. Let me tell you one, let me, let me write this off a bit. Uh, let me do this here. Yeah. Let's presume that you had a scenario that risk amount and timing is the same. So look at the risk. Let's say you're exchanging two cars uh, which are doing maybe the same business. Same business, let's say they are subjected to the same risk. But also, let's say that uh, you are doing a uh, you are just exchanging the machines maybe of the same of the same capacity. Exchanging machines of the same capacity. 
capacity the same, so no change between the cash flows expected. And lastly, let's say uh, you're speaking of timing. You say the meaning of timing here. Uh, let's say you're exchanging machines which both have a useful life of five years. In five years, a useful life. That means this would mean that no implications on cash flows. And so no, if no implication on cash flows, we say that fair value cannot be used just like this. So there will be no use of fair values. So this is how we account for the exchange of assets. I hope that you got me and everything is all right.